if you're wearing a clean suit, then I think that the tie in your collar is likely to be something that matches your pants and your shoes and the socks too. You see the wordplay there? I need to be in battle rap. Anyway, YouTube team keep it clean. The Ravens, oh, they've been super busy. We ain't even been able to keep up. But the Ravens, they double dip. Not the kind of double dip you do if you had a party and you see chips and dip. No, 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 not that double dip. Don't do that. It's, that's not team keep it clean. But the Ravens double dipped at tight end. Well, kind of, sort of. Because first, they chose, with one of their 54th round picks, they chose Charlie Collar, tight end from Iowa State, 6'6", 260. When I watched him, um, I saw a tight end. I like how he catches the ball. Because he, he, he goes and gets it out there. He don't sit, sit there and wait for it. Like, oh, come on, come to me. No, he goes and grabs it. But I watched a tight end that they used a lot for blocking. They had him on a line of scrimmage next to the offensive line. They had him lined up there a lot, and he was doing a lot of blocking. So that, I would assume that that would be sort of the similar type of role that he would have with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but he did also catch a significant amount of passes. He was productive in college. And when you look at his numbers at Iowa State, 2018, 11 catches for three touchdowns. Super efficient. Super efficient. Then 2019, upped his game a lot. He got a lot more involved. Uh, 51 catches, uh, 697 yards, seven touchdowns. So everything increased. So then the following year, it was more about sort of consistency. Then he had 44 catches, 591 yards, seven touchdowns. And then last year, the yards went up and the catches went up. The touchdowns dropped by one because he had 62 catches, 756 yards, uh, six touchdowns. So even though we know numbers don't tell the whole story, they never do. But based off of those numbers, he's somebody that is very efficient uh, and, and very effective in the red zone as well. That's something that was stated about him. Um, and he, again, the blocking. The blocking is important. He's not afraid to get physical as a tight end. Because like I said, the way that they had him lined up, that was his job a lot of the times. Now, on the flip side, um, the Ravens also drafted another tight end, Isaiah Likely from Coastal Carolina. I think, isn't that where Asher from All-American, where he went to go be a coach since he had like the neck problem? Anyway, they drafted Isaiah Likely. Now, initially, when they drafted him, I was like, what? Another tight end, but then I had to go watch for myself. I had to go see what kind of tight end he was. And in my opinion, especially when Eric DaCosta ends up doing his press or whenever that's going to be, or John Harbaugh talks about him, I think what they're going to end up saying, oh, well, this is somebody that, yeah, he's, a, he's a listed as a tight end, but he's going to be a wide receiver too. And I know the Ravens, they have not drafted a wide receiver yet, um, but I think this is sort of kind of their first wide receiver that they picked. Because with Isaiah Likely, again, the production is there. Um, but with him, he uh, is somebody that they, he, he is a tight end, but they had him lined up out wide a lot. And he catches a lot of bombs. He got underrated speed. He like 6'4", uh, about 250, I think. But he, again, the production is there too. The production is there. But when I watched him, I, I didn't feel like I was watching a tight end. I felt like I was watching a wide receiver. So we'll see exactly what the Ravens do with him. Yeah, 6'4", 245 pounds. Um, we'll, we'll see how the Ravens use him. Now, um, and just to look at his numbers, uh, his receptions, 2018 to 2021. So 2018, he had 12 catches, five touchdowns. Again, <laughs> that's super efficient. 2019, 32 catches, five touchdowns. There he goes again with that efficiency. 2020, 30 catches. How much, how much touchdowns? Guess. Five touchdowns. So the guy, for them first three years, he was like, I'm getting at least five touchdowns. That's not going to be an issue. Uh, but then 2021, last year, it really boosted his stock. He ended up having 59 catches, 912 yards, and 12 touchdowns. 12 of them. And his longest being a 99-yard touchdown. Now we know Coastal Carolina, they're not going against the best competition and whatnot. Um, but at the same time, production is still production because it would be an issue had he not been going against uh, the best competition and not producing. So shout out to him for making it happen and making it work. But yeah, to me, he looks like he is going to be a, uh, a wide receiver. Now, uh, speaking of wide receiver, well, before we get into the wide receiver talk, um, 
a lot of people, I've been seeing a lot of people ever since we drafted, especially since we drafted him too. But when we double dipped that tight end, a lot of, especially it being in the fourth round, these are not fifth, even sixth or seventh round picks that are like, oh, we don't know if they're going to make the right. These are fourth round picks. Fourth round picks, usually 9.9 times out of 10, they make the roster. They make the roster. So with these two tight ends, you know Mark Andrews, you know, he, he going to be straight. But uh, this has a lot of people wondering what the status is going to be with the Nick Boyle. Because it's one thing if you draft one tight end, and it's like, all right, that's going to be our third tight end. Because Josh Oliver, they, they tried it with him. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to go, but... Yeah, this is a fourth-round pick, so they, they drafted a tight end. When they drafted a collar, it's like, oh, okay, cool. All right, cool. I guess that's, that's going to be our third tight end. But then they double-dipped, and they took likely two. And it was like, oh, wait a minute now. So that got people to thinking. Now, I'm not sure how it will work with the whole, with a, maybe a post-June 1st. So what, I'm not sure what Nick Boyle's status is right now as far as his contract. I can't remember... If he has one or two years left on his deal, I got to see. But the, the this fourth round is very indicative of some potential Ravens moves that could happen very, very soon. With them drafting the punter, Stout, that could be Sam Cook either getting cut or him possibly retiring. And then with them drafting not one but two tight ends, that could lead us to see what something could possibly happen with uh with Nick Boyle. But anyway, um let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. And and these two tight ends, I love how they are they're so different from each other. They're so different from each other. We remember in 2019 when they had all them three tight ends said they had all their tight ends on the field. They were playing a lot of bully ball and whatnot, working in the middle of the field and doing their thing. Um but these guys, like, when I look, especially Isaiah Likely, again, he, he is more receiver than anything. Uh, he is more receiver than tight end to me. But he got the size of a tight end but looks like a wide receiver and plays like a wide receiver. So that could be a cheat code. If he's used the right way, heard that? Let's, let's say that again. If he's used the right way, that could be a cheat code. But it's up for the, to the Ravens. To what? To use him the right way. We out.